Hey guys, I'm Archie, and welcome to the seventh video in my SDL2 tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look on how to load images or textures into our program. If I load my program right now, I have a pink square on my screen that I can move around with my arrow keys. But what's cooler than a pink square is this tennis ball right here. It's cooler because it's got more details and it just looks nicer. So by the end of this video, we're going to be able to take this tennis ball and put it into our program and move it around. In order to do this, we're going to need a slight addition to the library we currently have. We're going to need SDL image. We could load certain images with the library we currently have, but it limits you to only BMP images, and I don't see any use in that. I would never use BMPs myself because they're lower quality and most images are PNG or a JPEG. So we're just going to go straight to SDL image. To get SDL image, just open your browser and search SDL image. And you should see a link like this, so click on it. And scroll down to development libraries. And select the Visual C++ 32 and 64 bit one. <clears throat> Here it is, it's downloaded. So I can close that of Chrome. You can open it up. And if you look inside it, we have something that looks familiar. So go inside your projects directory, here it is. And if you go inside depths, look at these two folders. We have an include and a lib folder, just like we do right here. Perfect. We're just gonna take the components of the include and lib folders and place them in the corresponding ones that we have made before. So first go inside include, and you'll find sdlimage.h. Now go to our include folder and drag sdlimage.h inside there. There we go, now we have a SDL image. Go back in both directories, go inside lib, select the 32-bit one, that's what we're worried about. It doesn't matter if your computer is 64-bit, because mine is too, uh, but we still want 32-bit. And here you will find an sdl2image.lib, so go inside our lib folder and drag that inside. There we go. And lastly, we need to copy over the DLLs. So go back to your project directory, click on your debug folder, and this is where you put the DLLs. So select these first four, and these two. There are six in total. And drag those in. There we go, now you have all the DLLs. You can close out of this. You can actually delete the raw file you downloaded. And you can go inside your project now. Once you're in your project, go under the Project tab, click your project's properties, then scroll down to Configuration Properties, Linker, Input, and where it says Additional Dependencies, click the down arrow, click Edit, and here we're going to tell it to include the lib file we added. So type sdl2 underscore image dot lib. Click OK, apply, and OK. And now SDL image should be set up. The first thing we need to do is to include SDL image. So I'm in window.cpp. I'm going to write include SDL underscore image dot h. And if we run this, we should not get any errors, which we don't. If you do get some sort of error, like an unresolved external symbol, that means that you set up uh, SDL image incorrectly. So now let's go inside our init method, and we have to initialize SDL image. So write if img underscore init, and uh, for the parameter, it's asking for flags. These flags determine what kind of image we want to look at. So my tennis ball is a PNG image, so I'm going to write img underscore init underscore PNG. If you wanted to initialize a JPEG image, you would write image underscore init underscore jpg. If you're going to use more than one type of image, like you're going to use both JPEGs and PNGs, you could use the bitwise or operator. So you could say image init png or img init jpg. And this will init both of them. Again, this is the bitwise or operator. I just want PNGs, so that's all I'm going to use. Now, what do we want to compare this to? We're in an if statement, aren't we? We want to see if this returns 
the flag that we put into it. It's kind of weird, but this is the flag we put in. If I hover over this flag, it says this flag equals the integral number two. So ideally we would say if image init does not equal two, because that's our flag. I'm gonna write if it doesn't equal image underscore init underscore PNG. It should return the flag we put into it if it's successful. So if it doesn't, then we have an error. And we're gonna write std c error failed to initialize SDL image. And we're gonna return false. By the way, I noticed before that I put zeros everywhere, like I put return zero here, here, and here. Uh, make sure you change that to false because this returns a bool. Zero will do the same exact thing, except it is a bool function, so it makes sense to return a false. And then in our window destructor, let's go ahead and put img underscore quit. We could go ahead and run this and everything should work so far, as it does. Next, we can go into rect.h, and we can make a new constructor. Go ahead and copy this. And since we have an image now, we don't need an RGB and A. We actually just want a string containing the path of our image on our computer. So I'm going to write const std string reference image path, just like that. Make sure you include string and go inside rect.cpp, copy the constructor we currently have, paste it over, and you can get rid of this last part again and put in const std string reference image path. And you can get rid of all of these because we don't care about that anymore. And in this constructor, we're actually going to load the image. The first thing you need to do is we need to make a surface. So write auto surface equals img underscore load. And I realized I forgot to include SDL image in this file. So include SDL image.h. So we're going to write image load. And inside here, we want the path of the image, as it says here const char pointer file. So we're going to write image underscore path. But notice this is an std string, and this wants a const char pointer. To convert it to a const char pointer, all you have to write is you put, you, uh, you put dot c underscore str, and that returns a const char pointer. Okay, now we have a surface. Image load returns an sdl service pointer, so we could have written sdl surface pointer surface like that. But I think it looks a lot cleaner just to write auto. And if you're not familiar with the auto keyword, all it does is it takes the return type of this function and it makes this variable that same return type. We'll write if not surface, if service is zero, then std c error failed to create surface. Make sure you include IO stream. Next, we are gonna make a texture, and the texture is what's gonna be displayed onto the screen. We're basically using the surface to load the image, and we're gonna use the texture to put it onto the screen. For the texture, let's make a member variable. So I'll go back to rect.h, and in this private slot, we can write sdl underscore texture, pointer, texture equals null pointer. And we can make this name even better, like tennis, texture or something. So go back to rect.cpp and now we're going to say our tennis texture equals stl underscore create texture from surface. And we're going to use the surface we made to make a texture. First we need a renderer, so put that in, renderer, and then we need the surface. So put the surface in, and uh, this should load the texture. We should check if it doesn't. So we're going to write if not tennis texture, then stdc error 
fails to create texture. Great. Next, let's make a destructor. So I'll go back to rect.h and make that rect. And then rect.cpp. And inside here, you're going to want to delete the texture. So write SDL destroy texture and pass in our tennis texture. And you're also going to want to free the service at the end of the constructor. So write that SDL free surface and pass it in surface. And good, we've taken care of everything. Now let's go into main.cpp. This is where we made our rect. We're going to want to use the other constructor for the image. So let's delete these last four bits, the RGB and A, and let's put a string in. I'm actually going to move my picture into my project. So here is my project directory. Uh, let's go inside this folder. Inside here, we'll make a new folder. New folder. We'll call it res, short for resources. And inside here, we're going to place our tennis ball. For this string, we're going to pass in res slash tennis underscore ball dot png. All right, now our image should load. The next thing we want to do is actually draw the image to the screen. So go back into rect.cpp into the draw method. And first of all, let's change a couple things in this draw method. Right here, I don't know why I put these RGB values right here. We have our own member variables for the RGB and A that was initialized. So you could just put underscore R underscore G B A like that. And I forgot the underscore here. And this makes more sense. And for the STL rect, we can actually initialize the STL rect with a brace initializer list. So it would look like this. STL rect rect equals put a set of braces. And we need four things. First, the x and y. So I'll write x and y. These are our member variables. And then width and height, which are also our member variables. You can end it off and we can get rid of all of this. It's a lot more compact. Next, we have to figure out which drawing method we want to use. If we have a texture loaded, we don't want to use this method because this is going to draw a square with, uh, with some color. So we're going to make an if statement saying if our texture exists, if it's not zero. And I forgot, I named my texture tennis texture. So if our tennis texture is loaded, then this is what we're going to do. Let's actually move this rect to the top because we're going to be using it in, in any case. So here we have this rect. If the tennis texture is loaded, then we're, then we're going to call SDO render copy. First we pass in our renderer, then the texture, tennis texture. Then it's asking for this uh, source rect, and this is basically going to tell what portion of the picture we want to use, and we want to use the whole thing. So this doesn't really matter, we just write null pointer. And for the last one, this is where we pass in this rect by address. So address of rect. And this will put the picture onto the screen. Now we could put an else statement, and it'll do this. This is actually it. We don't need to do anything else. And if we run the program, you should see the tennis ball on your screen, and I can move it around. Perfect. Uh, by the way, it doesn't really matter what resolution your picture is. I'm, I specifically made my picture 120 by 120, and then in main.cpp, I scaled it to 120 by 120, so it looks good. But if your picture was bigger, then this SDL rect would scale it down. So you could use any picture of any size, and the SDL rect will take care of scaling it. Oh, well, really, this function will take care of scaling it. But anyway, that's it for this video. We were able to get our tennis ball onto the screen and move it around. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time.